Hack number nine. Welcome back to the Hack Shack. Week number nine. Hack number nine. The guitar pickup. I'm going to show you today how to make one of these yourself out of a magnet, some coils of wire, explain how the induction works, and then play a little bit on this one string slide guitar that I made from a hunk of oak from an old table. So follow along and you'll learn how to build your own guitar pickup. Time for Guitar Pickups 101. This is a drawing of a basic single coil pickup uh, that's on a lot of electric guitars. It consists of a magnet in the middle, something to cap that magnet to hold the wire, and then windings of wire around the magnet. The uh, magnet, of course, has a zone of magnetism, the flux, and our guitar string sits in the middle of this, vibrating away, right? And because it's metal, it's going to disturb that magnetic field. It will change its flux, and thereby creating induction. And basically what a pickup is, is a generator. It's an electrical generator, which is defined as the production of an electrical potential difference, or voltage, across a conductor situated in a changing magnetic flux. So the wire is our conductor, and the changing magnetic flux is caused by the vibrating string sitting in close proximity to the magnetic field of the pickup. And that's how that happens. And pickups have an inductance measured in Henry's and uh, most guitar pickups it's usually between 1 and 9. It depends on the number of turns, the diameter of the wire, also the shape of the pickup can uh, have some effects on that. And uh, most of uh, the single coil ones you see, you know, they look like this and the windings go around a one big bar and then there's the kind that are multiple pole pickups um, you've seen those and whereas each one of those has its own winding and they're all connected together or you have multiple poles and the windings go around all of them and then the two wires come out so they uh, they also have a DC resistance, which is measured in ohms, and most of them that's about you know one k to fifteen k. The ones I'm building today are really low; they're down there in just you know below ten ohms each. There's a minimal amount of windings on them, and uh, they also uh, have another characteristic about them where they are. Uh, they have distributed capacitance, and it's the combination of uh, the the capacitance exists between the wires, so they're in close proximity to each other. So within the wire winding itself, those wires next to each other creates a capacitance. So the combination of an inductor and a capacitor connected in parallel with a series resistor, this creates a tuned circuit. So if you were to draw this, you would see. Here's the resistance of our winding. Here is our inductor coil. And then that capacitance of that inductor coil comes into play. So that would be here. And then that's basically what the, the circuit looks like. And it's tuned to a very well-defined frequency. Each one is unique because of this. If you were to draw it on a graph where this would be the voltage out and this would be the frequency, you would see a curve that looks something like this. And most of them have a peak frequency in the upper range, which is perfect for a guitar. So that's basically what happens with pickups and how they work and a little bit about induction. So now let's get on to the uh, the build of our little pickup. Well, if I'm going to build a guitar pickup, I need something to uh, test the guitar pickup on. So I built this. This is my uh, one-stringed wonder. It's a 23 and a half inch scale length one-string guitar. Made it from an old piece of oak from a uh, a table that was here and laying over in the woods next to my house, all broken up. And uh, little did that table know it would end up 
on Hack a Week as a one string guitar. Now I'm ready to build a pickup and uh, I'm going to make one from uh, basically a magnet. And here we go, this is my little magnet. I'm going to tear this little plastic speaker apart. These are in a lot of toys. Okay, all you really need to do to take these apart is break away the outside part. It's just some little bits of plastic that are actually glued to the to the speaker magnet and they come off pretty easily. Scrape away a little bit of that glue and there we go. And we have a magnet ready to wind wire around. I need to put a piece of plastic on each side of it to hold the wire in place and that's what I'll do next. And I'll cut those out with some scissors. Get this mixed up really good. And it won't take very much. Just put a little bit on. Hey, that's a magnet. <laughs> and we'll set that right on the piece of plastic on one side. Get it centered up here. Squish. Okay, that's one. plastic on this one, a little easier. I think this will hold much better than the hot glue did. The hot glue came apart pretty easy. In fact, while I was winding it a couple of times, it did that, which wasn't really very fun. <laughs> well, that's all cured up. We need to do two things before we wind wire on here. I need to have a place for the wire to come out first part of the winding, which would be right there, and then uh, another across from it on the other side. All, what that's going to do is just give me a place to pull the wire through um, before I start wrapping it. Okay, I could, uh, I could wrap this by hand, but it gets a little weird because each time you go around you're twisting the wire, you know, one revolution like this because it's not spooling off, and that gets a little weird. It's best to be able to have it on a spool and this spinning and this spinning at the same time, feeding the wire. So uh, I found a pretty simple solution to that is to use the hot glue gun and a bolt, just a quarter inch bolt. Works pretty well. This worked pretty good yesterday. Put some hot glue down first on to my pickup. And if I put it on here, it's going to solidify really fast, so get it as centered as I can and squish it on there. Getting it centered is important so that it doesn't wobble too much. Now you need to really anchor it in place by putting some hot glue up around the actual bolt head. And uh, that way it's going to hold it in place. Otherwise it would just pop right off. That's what happened on me yesterday. Okay, I've brought my little piece of wire through there, through the slot, and I left uh, a few inches there to work with, taped it to the front of the spool to keep it out of harm's way. And then the wire goes up to a little holder I made out of a piece of coat hanger, and I just hang it on my tool rack, and then it can just spool off from this as I wind. So camera back in place, get in a little tighter for the shot here, and you'll see how this works. I have to uh, just kind of take my time. Got the drill set on low speed. This is just a cordless drill. And um, here we go. I'm going to get started. I'm going to see if I can give you a little better angle on this. There we go. Okay, here goes. We're just going to keep going until we pretty much fill up the spool, and you want to kind of work back and forth like this as you go. All right, 
stopped on this side because I started on this side. That way my wire can come out my little slot there and I'll anchor it in place. That's that. I'll cut the bolt away with an X-Acto. Just get it started. Go nice and easy. Okay, so now we'll seal all around the edges with some hot glue. Keep this thing together. You just want to coat all the outside. Go from each plastic piece to the other. Bridge that gap. The glue is dry and now it's time to strip the uh, enamel coating off from the copper wire. Some people scrape it off, um, some people sand it off. I found a really good method is to simply burn it off. You just take a match or a lighter and you can see the, the enamel coating just burn right off. And then uh, take a piece of fine sandpaper and give it a little clean up. It doesn't take very much. It works really well. It doesn't compromise the, the wire in any way. Sometimes when you scrape it, you can take away a little bit of the copper and it gets a little thin and then later it might break. And then once we get that done, take some solder and tin the ends up a little bit. 